Okay, in this class we are going to discuss R and the title of this talk is R for MBA and it's an introduction to the R programming language. It's a statistical programming language. It's a short introduction. It will just get you started with knowing what R is, how it came about and how to use it. And there's a lot more to R that you'll need to learn later on. So let's get started. So R is was, in, was in created by Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman in 1993 in the University of Auckland in New Zealand. And it's a programming language in which you write your commands and run. And before R there was a language called S from Bell Labs in 1976. So R is a free version. S was probably not free. So let's get started. So you just, how do you look for Because R is a single letter, it's hard to Google for it. So you just say R stats for statistics, Windows for because if you're installing on Windows and download. You find R and also look for R Studio. It's just a nice UI. Then you install R and R Studio, download it, install it. Then once you install it, you'll get these icons. The version number may be different and the icon may look different on your Windows. And then when you click double click on it, it will still open up the R window or the R Studio window. So let's look at the windows in detail. So we'll be mostly using R Studio, which is basically nice arrangement of windows. So R Studio consists of four panels. And in the first, this is the R Studio uh, window, in which consists of file viewer, where you type in your edit files. And then in the next window, next to it is the variables and values. These are variables and values. Below it is a console, the command prompt. And here is where you type in your commands and the R interpreter will return the output. And this is where you will type most of your commands, almost all your commands. And if you have any graphs, it will show up on the panel next to it. And these panels are sub-panels out here. You can say file, packages, help, viewer. And out here also there are other sub-panels like history. But these are the main panels that will be working. So how do you start working in R? Usually it has some data to analyze. It will either be in Excel format or MySQL or some format. You will load the data into R. You will analyze the data, visualize the data into graphs and come to some conclusion. And use the graphs and the conclusions in your papers or in your presentations. That's how R is used normally. And another use of R would be automating your data analysis. So first thing we need to know is help. If you're in R Studio, you can just say question mark and this is the prompt, the, the greater than sign, question mark R unif, unif. This stands for random uniform number distribution and you type that R will show you help on R unif and you can read about it or if you are more lazy than that also you can just type R stats R U N I F and then and Google and Google also allows the spelling correction so if you don't know how to spell random uniform you can just write R stats random uniform and you'll get the same result you'll also get results from other places like Stack Overflow uh, which has really good reputation for answering exactly the answer that you that a newcomer ha encounters exactly like you would encounter so, okay so let's get started with R you can use R like a calculator you just say 1 plus 2 plus 100 you get 103 so this this square bracket 1 is just a this is a way of telling R that it's a vector of size 1 then you can assign variables values to variables so you're saying x and this arrow left arrow is actually two characters less than and minus uh, 2 by 3 assigned to x so you get x equal to 0 0.6667 so there's some some digits of precision is there it's not infinite and y equal to 5 by 3 then z equal to x plus y and then you press z it prints the answer 2.33 so z is here all the variables that you, you assign are saved in the values in the environment global environment it says environment and it's a global environment and your history is also there all the things you typed in and you can also look at other stuff around we'll look at later then you can plot the values c stands for a column vector so x y z are two are three values that you in a column you make it a vector and give it a plot so so plots x y and z x is 0.6 y is 1.6 z is 2.3 and 1 2 and 3 so this is an index and this is c x y z that's plotting so it's like a calculator right now you can also do scientific calculator which is not easy a lot of times to do 
of course google also does other stuff but we are going to use r for the time being you can say 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 and these are fractions so r says 2.5 because this is 1 and okay so one difference is that r allows for infinity and undefined objects so you say 1 divided by 0 is undefined so r says it's infinite i and f stand for infinite and when you say 0 by 0 it says undefined or not a number in computer science hardware it's nan and r also automatically uses complex numbers you say square root of 2i it says 1 plus 1i that's a complex number so complex numbers, undefined numbers, infinity, not, uh, not, uh, not a numbers, everything is built into R. So let's look at a command prompt more. So you start R by clicking on this icon and anything starting with a hash symbol is a comment. So from hash are ignored by R till the end of the line. And use hash will use hash and you should also be using hash to write what you're doing because R is very cryptic and very uh, condensed language. So you need to explain at the top of it whenever you're writing code what you're doing. So in this case, I'm explaining to you two plus two, and this is a comment, and the result is four. And you can ignore the one. That means four is the one actor of size one. And similarly, type anything. You get at one two point five. Let's see what you can. What are the other data types are there in R? So a lot of things are there in R which are not in other languages. Is the vector concept of vector sequences which is uh, heavily built into R so so sequence of numbers from 1 to 10 you would write like this 1 colon 10 and if you write 1 colon 10 it prints 1 to 10 and then you could also create a vector using a C function C C 1 4 0 minus 2 and assign it to U and then 1 to 5 you write like this C 1 2 3 4 you could write like this or you could write sequence sequence is a function which starts from 0 ends at 4 and the length of the sequence is a 3 the 1 2 3 numbers are there or sequence from 0 to 4 and incre incremented by 2 every time 0 to 4 you can even name the the elements of the vector a b c equal to 1 b equal to 5 c equal to 10 it's a name vector so the first function we look at is summary function so given given us given an object u containing four elements you say i want a summary of u so then the summary view prints minimum of u is minus 2 first quartile is minus 0.5 median is 0.5 mean is 0.75 third quartile is 1.75 and maximum is 4 this is a maximum so summary basically tells you whatever input you give it in summary of that so look at the quantiles so again the quantiles of u are 0 25 50% 75% 100% so it tells you what are the numbers that are quantiles minus 2 to 4 and you could instead of if you don't like these percentages you can give your own percentage 0 0.33 0 0.66 and 1 and it gives you a different set of numbers quantiles and then you can plot it also so 1 is here 4 is here and then 0 is here and minus 2 is here 1 2 3 and 4 and use on the y axis so and r has a lot of ways of plotting data and we'll look at all the ways as we go along and you'll find hundreds of ways on when you search on Google of, of uh, representing your data visually and you'll choose one which is uh, shows you clearly how the data distributions look very clearly so box plot is one way of showing so you have this u vector and you want to show it say box plot u so I will draw this thing it, the, the minimum is here the maximum is here and these are called the outliers and inside the pink box are the quantile 1 to quantile 2 3 and a median is a dark line so median is 0 0.5 out here and then summary of you tells you where this q1 and q3 are that is the common thing you see is a histogram it's a histogram of you it shows you uh, the data of how many how many are between it shows you uh, at minus 2 to 0 there are two elements then at 2 there is one element between 0 and 2 and then one element at 4 so it shows a histogram in this case it's not clear but look at a better example when you have a larger data it becomes clearer then we have many functions like mean you have a vector you can find a mean standard deviation maximum minimum median variance sum length the sum of u is 3 length of u is 4 
standard deviation is 2.5 max is 4 min is minus 2 median is 0.5 and variance is 6.25 and mean is 0.75 we already saw na and not available so na is not available is different from not a number so let's look at example you take string of log of a vector and any means not available so what happens in excel is and other packages in programming you know something not available you just make it zero or some minus one or something and then when you do compute statistics all your data goes wrong it's like doing an election analysis or voter analysis and all the people who didn't actually respond you just put as the default vote and then whole data is skewed so an R is different in the sense that R actually tracks people who didn't respond as any that means not available and so whenever you take average or median NAs are not considered so it's careful in using the means and averages suppose you take a sample of salary of like a thousand people and only two people respond and you get an average of thousand that would be wrong unless you also tell the people that the sample size was only two people actually responded so in this case we have this so when you take log of minus one is not a number log of zero is minus infinity log of 1 is 0, log of 2 is 0 0.693, this is log base 2 and NA is NA, so NA basically passes through functions as NA and R will tell you warning that NA and not a number is produced and you can check is finite or not so you ask is finite, this is a function, dots are part of the function, it doesn't really matter if you use dot or not uh, so this is a function with a dot name in the name, it says you give it this vector, it tells you false means it's not is finite log of minus one is not finite only these two are finite and then dealing with missing values is a big part of R which is not in Excel in Excel really hard time dealing with missing values so if you have a missing value in a vector NA you try to take a mean it says not available so what you need to do is tell the mean function that NA dot RM equal to true that means remove all the NAs then it gives you the mean that means removing this thing and then you can find NA is in X by saying is NA X it tells you out here there is a NA at this point and the major part of R is also having all these random fancy random numbers in, built into it so let's look at some random numbers you could generate you can say make 3 uniformly distributed random numbers random unif 3 it gives you 3 random numbers so 3 digits and if you want it between uh, 5 and 10 you say between 5 and 10 3 so it gives you 3 ra random numbers between 5 and 10 and then if you wanted uh, to generate random numbers in a range with to 1 decimal you can just say round add the function round digits equal to 1 you get 3 random numbers and then what you could do is to save it in a variable y and then you can see what's in y and then you can uh, let's look at a histogram with a larger set you generate 100 ra uniform random numbers and save it in X and plot X as a histogram so this is a frequency plot of X now let's look at uh, normally distributed random numbers normal so almost every every distribution in, in real life is uh, in physics would be normally distributed we will cover what normal is mean later on but we let's look at example so it says random normal 100 and then I want a histogram and the color equal to light blue so 100 normal distributed random numbers and then it shows it a, the histogram of 100 numbers and the mean is around 0 and the standard deviation is between 2 and minus 2 so what you see out here is uh, that the call equal to light blue this is a string you are passing to it and this is a name parameter because an R, a lot of functions have like really lots of parameters and you don't want to specify all the parameters to, to specify the ones that you're really interested in you just have names for it and in the beginning you get a default variables and then you get a name variables let's look at another example to roll a dice 10 times how would you do it you just say sample sample is a function which takes a vector 1 to 6 and I want to do it once throw it once you get one sample and if you want to throw it 10 times you say sample 1 to 6 10 times what happens is whenever sample sample doesn't really replace a number so you to tell sample to replace after it takes out a number put it back in the set of 1 to 6 so you get a sample so that the number can repeat otherwise it, it will just sample new things so if you say sample 166 you get a permutation of 1 to 6 
And how do you toss a coin? You just create a vector of two strings, head and tails, and ten times, and replace equal to true. So true and t are actually synonymous for an R. And but not this t. This t is a string t for tail and head. So you get a bunch of ten heads and tails. And how do you sample? Four students from a class of fifty-four students. You say sample from one to fifty-four and four, and you want to re replace it. That means I don't want to sample the same guy twice or same person. So I get twenty-seven, five, ten, twenty-nine. So four people with no repetitions. Then what are the other things you can do in R? So let's look at an example of plotting. So you say x is a uh, a plot of uh, random normal number, hundred random normal numbers, and y is also x plus some normal numbers. So x and y are clearly correlated, and then you want to plot x against y. So you say plot x tilde y, and then you get a plot like this. So this is called a scatter plot because they're points. X and y are vectors, and then you can add a regression line. A B line, and you say linear regression on y, x, and color is red. So you get this line, and then you can share your data with Excel because a lot of times what people do is they they, they have the data in Excel, they export it into R to process by R and get it back into Excel. Excel does have a lot of stats functions, and you can upload and load uh, packages into Excel to do data processing. But it's not scalable, and errors just propagate, and without people knowing about it, because Excel just it's e easier for Excel to not show you the error than to deal with errors. It deals with errors silently, so I will actually make you stop and make you think. Okay, there's something missing out there. So how do you share with Excel? You say read dot csv, and then file dot choose as a function, and you choose a function. It will give you a pop up, and then you pick a file, and then read it into the into variable called sales. Or you could give it a string, the name of the file, and it will look in a current folder. You can also read SPSS data by using a library, it's a library foreign for foreign data, and then read dot SPSS some SPSS file name. And we'll see later on how to process this variable after you read it in. So the first, the most important data frame that's used heavily in R is the data frame. Data frame is like a Excel sheet. It has rows and columns, and it contains data and all the cells. So you say three columns A, B, C. So data, you make a data frame and assign it to X. Column A, column B, and column C. Column A contains one, two, three. Column B contains five, six, seven. Column C contains eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then when you print X, you get this data frame. And to address only one column out of the whole Excel sheet of this data frame, you say X data frame. Dollar A, so you'll get this one, two, three, and you could also address it as x double square bracket string A and close double square bracket. That gives it a column A, and you can delete a column of a data frame by just assigning null to it. So you can delete C. You can add a column by just saying x dollar D. You get another column, so you get A B D now with different data, and then there are many functions to combine. X, uh, sheets, data frames. So you have y, which is 31 to 33. Another thing, and you can c bind, column bind x and y. So x is here and y is here, and became a bigger, bigger data frame. And then in a data frame, the first thing you want to do is you have a data frame with one x is one two not available four x, and then you make a data frame out of it with y is the reverse of x. So this is y with reverse of x. But then this n is suppose n is a, you want to remove them you just say n a dot omit in data frame d, and you get this row and the last row and these two the red ones got removed. And then the another common data structure used in R is the matrix. So matrix you give a bunch of values and you say number of rows or number of columns. So you're saying number of rows is two. So it will say and it's doing column major. So one, two, three, four. And these are the column names, and these are the row names. And there are lots of functions. For example, determinant of a m would be one into four minus two into three, which is minus two. And next thing you can do is create your own functions. 
and we're going to look at later le lectures a lot of details but this is just giving you an idea of what all R can do so we're going to create a function called gamble so you create a fun gamble is a function equal to function or assign gamble is a object which is assigned a function and the function is takes a variable n as a parameter and it samples 1 to 6 n times and replace equal to true then after you define it immediately you can call it there's no need to no need to compile it you say gamble 4 and then n equal to 4 so it becomes it returns you 4 values and then you can plot it also you say histogram gamble 100 color equal to pink so you get this plot of histogram of gamble and then because uh, there's a lot of packages in R it also comes with a lot of data so let's look at some of the data so you can play around immediately you don't need to actually have data collect your own data so let, let's look at some built-in examples now how to do it you say example plot and you see all the different plots example box plot example histogram you'll see different ways of doing it and if you like something you can stop and actually copy paste and use it in your own code and there's a lot of data also so typically if you look on google you'll find all these data being used to show different uh, properties or features of R so this so like, there's a library called a car and the built-in data it has a, every library has own built-in data sets so you see scatter plot matrix and then these are the parameters in the scatter plot data set miles per gallon displacement DRAT weight cylinders and data as empty cars this is the empty cars the data set and then it will plot this stuff showing you that the relation between miles per gallon versus displacement in the and these are the data about the cars engines so it's easy to play around and try the examples and till you find uh, to understand that the features you're planning to use in your in your own R code and if you're really not the coding type there's something called R commander which also is a package inside R you can download R commander library R commander and it has a lot of buttons for doing statisticals but it's not as friendly as you might think because you really need to know R to get things done but R commander makes it easy for you to not remember all the function names it shows you nicely but instead of R commander you, could, you might as well be using Google and Stack Overflow and just type in Google and then you find there are lots of complex ways of doing hundreds of ways of doing the same thing in R much more than even Perl let's get more examples you just see library or commander attach empty cars and scatter 3d plot you want to plot weight against displacement against mpg and so it's plotting three dimension weight versus displacement and mpg of the engine car engines and if you want to see more about empty cars you just type question mark empty cars will tell you more about it okay this is just a short introduction to r and if you're more interested these are some of the free stuff available on the web Introduction to R by Venables and Smith. It's part of the R intro manual. It's available online. Just type into R, into Google, you'll find a book or whatever the thick manual. And the stats method has some stuff, and all the stuff is taken from here. Uh, advanced probability statistics in R. There's a Zoom kind. There's a guy who wrote this blog. He has a lot of interesting stuff. Unfortunately, some people consider it R rated and it's blocked in India. But it's just R code. Then statistics, UCLA is a lot of stuff, and several lectures on financial trading in with R. And there's like lots and lots of stuff. It just depends on how much time you can spend reading it up or learning. And the best way to learn is to by actually doing it. We'll look more later in the later lectures. Thank you.